And of course, as always, we, uh, we want everybody to know that whatever is discussed on the show is the opinion of our guests and don't necessarily reflect our official policy. Although I do have to say, if we say something, maybe it does reflect something for me and her myself. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so don't, uh, somebody says something bad or, in, or politically incorrect, don't hold us to them in perpetuity. Or if we say something politically incorrect, it's not our fault to just post a question. And uh, we've got some questions we've written down, but today is an open show and open forum and uh, we'll just run with it. And of course, uh, you know, thank you for joining us. And uh, today we're gonna try and sell you whatever we can sell you, what the heck. They're permanent, they last like months. Yeah. So oh, like yeah, yeah, installation. Yeah. oh yeah, that's funny. There's, <laughs> so there's, a, uh, there's a little town north of me that it probably has like, eight dealers on the highway every one of them every car has one of those bit and i was like who is this guy like and so i have a buddy who's a it manager i'm like how much are the balloons like what how did he all of a sudden get every one of you and it, it's really funny when you drive through the town you're like what's going on yeah it was a thousand dollars per rooftop for the balloons just in case you're wondering the yeah. hardest thing in the world is the salesman and the balloons in the morning because yeah. there's always that it's always done by two guys because the other the old dogs they go oh man i got i got an appointment i gotta run here quick i gotta get my car ready and they're down in service having coffee so the permanent balloons work really good oh yeah these things are like there's like a there's like a aluminum infrastructure and they hang them on and it's crazy it's it like sort of it looked like a dna science toy but like the balloons are permanent <laughs> I was like, wow, that's that's a big commitment to balloons, man. When you're doing when you're oh, yeah. doing a permanent balloon installation. Oh God. But you know what? It's all about that movement as they drive down the road. I mean, so tell me, down down, down there in Texas, how many dealers still have the uh, the strings with the little uh, twirly propellers on them? Oh, I haven't seen those for a while. Yeah, yeah. Maybe but I still, ind independent lots. You'll see them on occasion, yeah. but yeah. I still see a bunch of independent lots here with the string lights. I miss yes. the I miss the big the poor guy who painted the on the windows. Yeah, the big sale. I always thought that was a yeah. A lot we get work. we get them here at Christmas time. Although uh, I don't think they're doing a lot of business this year. You know, it's funny. It's funny you say that, and, and then I, I got to duck off because I got to go pick up my daughter. But yeah, we're getting late. That because there was a time, and, and I'm I'm not. There was before my time, but where we were so important and relevant. They used to paper off the showroom windows, change out the model years, and then take the paper down and it's all this brand new and people would come in and they'd see the new year and it was all exciting and everything like that. And now look what we're trying to do to just get their attention. Well, don't forget that was back when there was a new car every, well, way back in the 60s, there was a new car every year, new, new design. Yeah. And 70s. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, in the 80s, they, they redid them kind of, you know, Honda used to do a new model every four years, no matter what. Yep, that's right. So now it's uh, eight Sorry. to 10 years. Yeah. So why, why line up to, 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 to discover that uh, or cover your windows to say, hey, that CRV has got a backup camera now. <laughs> well, it's, it's just, it's funny how you take that relevance of what it, what it was and how important you, you, you know, you have a Chevy store in a community and, and it would be a big thing when something happened. And now it's like, eh. yeah, my dad grew up in the Mich in Michigan and he tell tells me about like when he was a little kid, the car dealer was like a lawyer, a doctor, like he was an important member of the community. And I often tell people this too, like, cause I'm sure you guys get this. If anybody knows you're in the car industry, they start banging on the car industry. And I'm like, yeah, hold up before you do that. You know, like I live in a little town that's called Round Rock. It's North of austin and there are six car dealers and i i tell them you know if you think about they're normally the biggest employer in the town they by far pay the most sales tax of anybody and they usually are the biggest contributors to charity so before mm. you bang on yeah. the car guy like and this is the other thing i think about because i'm an entrepreneur is like to be the guy that is willing to put eight million dollars into a building that because gm tells him to like there's no venture capital company coming in right like carvana's That's got right. all this great money zoom all those guys you know the guy that's starting a chevy store 
he's figured out how to raise that money on his own and taken a huge risk. So I know we like to bang on him. Like there's obviously a lot of reasoning behind why I like, I'd be scared too to make change. Right. Like, cause again, I can't go to wall street or VC to get $4 million to do whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take off. So gentlemen, uh, this has been an incredible conversation. Thank you, everybody. Gentlemen, thank you. That was a lot of fun and glad to see you join us, Stephen and Barry and uh, John for your uh, constant support. And uh, we look forward to you next time. And we're going to make this a staple every month, end of the month uh, uh, show just to do that. And Stephen, I got a great idea for you. We're going to use for a show, which is the good stuff about the car business.